Today, we are going to be reviewing the newer 660 bicolor RGB LED light panel. If you're an independent filmmaker looking for a budget set of lights, but don't want to compromise too much on quality, these lights may be a great option for you. Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm really sorry it's been a while since my last upload, but I have been really busy in terms of freelancing, which I'm sure I'll update you at some point in the near future. But in today's video, as I said, we're going to be looking at and reviewing the newer 660 bicolor RGB LED light panel. There are several versions within this range of LED lights and that determines whether you would like it as bicolor only or include the RGB feature within it as well. Its other variant is also the maximum power output that these lights can provide you with and that is where the name of the lights come from. So this is the 660 because it contains 660 LED beads within the light but you also have 480 called the 480 and also 530 with 530 LED beads. You get the idea. Therefore, parts of this review can also apply to those other variants of this light as well. It probably makes sense to do this in chronological order essentially. So let's start with what you receive in the back. Depending on the amount of lights that you purchase and whether you get them as part of a set or individually, with the one that I got, you will receive two LED light panels with a mains cable and a U bracket for each. Two light stands, an instruction manual, a few pieces of other paper, and and the screws for tightening your u-shaped brackets onto the light itself you do also receive a diffusion panel that comes with each light and they're already inserted in front of the light so if you're looking for those when you first open the bag they're already in front of the light regarding the quality of the carry case itself i wasn't exactly expecting anything amazing like the one you'd receive with the aperture 120d mark ii however that's completely understandable considering that these lights are probably aimed for filmmakers with a smaller budget and therefore providing you with a stronger quality carry case would only increase the cost of this light even more although i did actually struggle to get the light back into its dedicated area within the carry bag when it had the u bracket still on them so that's something to just bear in mind now let's move on to build quality of the light and i for one am really impressed with this i've used led panels in the past that are made with much cheaper materials than this and they would have been around 250 quid each so the fact that i got two of these for around 270 quid i think with the quality and the build of these lights it has a nice metal finish it feels nice and robust and i for one am more than happy with it now let's move on to size and i maybe should have looked at the measurements beforehand but compared to your generic one by one light panel they were a little bit smaller in size here is a comparison against the Aperture MC and also a comparison against the Aperture 120D Mark II. I am aware that the 120D is a completely different type of light however I just thought I'd include it for comparison reasons and if you've got one as well you can also conjure up an idea of how small or big these lights are. So let's actually set the light up. First of all the light stands they're definitely not the strongest or the best light stands in the world and you can instantly tell them as soon as you're holding one in your hand. But if you're only going to use this light for basic or home use, these light stands will do the job just fine. If you're a professional and you're going to be taking these out on set with you, I would recommend investing in some stronger, more robust light stands such as the newer Pro 9 foot ones, which I will leave a link in the description below. Once the light is on the stand, you have two options to power this light either battery or mains. As a heads up, I did use mains power for the majority of these tests that you'll see in this video. With mains power as well, be sure to take some extension reels with you on set. The mains cable doesn't provide you with much reach once the light stand is up to a, you know, a respective height. So you wouldn't really want to fall short when you're on set and have to rely on using batteries for the entire shoot. Using its CCT mode, you can adjust the color temperature from 3200 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin. These are in 100 Kelvin increments. 50 Kelvin increments would have been preferred but I'm fine with that. The two rotating dials that can adjust the temperature or the intensity don't actually have hard stops when it comes to the minimum or maximum setting. It's just a constant rotation essentially making the marker on the dials themselves pointless when determining whereabouts on a scale that setting is. Shame but not a deal breaker. Now I'm going to stop talking about the boring and actually show you some actual tests of this light and how it performs. 
lights. With bicolor LED light panels, you usually get the most output and intensity at 4300 Kelvin. So just bear that in mind when looking at these tests as well. The camera that I used was always set to ISO 400, at f4 and at a 180 degree shutter angle. All lights were originally set to 5600 Kelvin, but that was mostly because the 120D Mark II is a daylight only light and I just wanted to match that. So let's start with the performance of the newer panel. In terms of power, it's pretty impressive. Considering the small size of the panel, it does also have quite a wide spread with the barn doors wide open and it's a subtle drop off in terms of its gradient as well, which was a nice surprise to see. As part of this test, I also filmed the 120D and the Aperture MC both at 100% intensity to compare their power outputs with this newer panel. The 120D was always going to be way brighter straight out of the box because it's meant to be used with soft boxes and modifiers. Therefore, I did have to turn the intensity of the 120D down to around 56% in order to match the exposure of what we were getting with the newer panel. For me, the MC is primarily an on-camera light. Therefore, I'm kind of not too sure about the reason behind having those built-in effects in the MC. Because of its power, output to me there isn't enough power there for those effects to be used on more professional sets unless you've got 12 of things lying around back to the newer panels new how do you say it newer 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 by pressing the mode button i was then able to access the other features of this light such as the hsi rgb function as well as the effects that it comes pre-installed with as well when using the hsi mode here is the waveform comparison of 5600 or daylight kelvin versus an rgb value both at 100 in terms of its intensity i don't know why but i was expecting the bicolor mode to produce a lot more power than the hsi mode whereas these waveforms Form show that they're relatively similar in terms of its maximum output. One thing that I did notice with the HSI mode, and I'm not sure if it applies to most lights with this feature, was the significant saturation changes when dialing through the colors. I'm not a lighting expert when it comes to that sort of stuff, but I would have expected that the saturation shifts would have only occurred when I was dialing in the saturation, not when I'm just shifting through the color values. Finally, and I warn you now that the following content does contain a lot of flashing imagery, is that the light does come with up to nine pre-installed lighting effects, which can provide more creative opportunity and production value to your videos or films. Just like the HSI and the bicolor mode, you have the ability to adjust the intensity of these effects as well, which is really nice. Two effects that are missing in the newer panel, but you do have in the Aperture MC, is the fire and the faulty bulb effect. It is a shame that these aren't pre-installed as standard. However, I'm assuming that there is opportunity for newer to add those in at a later date if the demand is there for them. It did take a little bit of getting used to only using the two dials and the mode button to work your way around the, the pre-installed menu. I'm pretty confident that the mobile app would be a much better way to navigate around these effects and also the HSI feature as well. I have heard and seen in other videos online that the maximum power output is is only achievable using mains power and you only receive half of the maximum power when using batteries. Here is a waveform comparison of both and the arrow points to the highlight area where you'll see the difference between the two. When using batteries, only having one still results in the same brightness output. For anyone interested in the noise performance of these lights, they're practically silent, which is great considering the power output these have. In fact, let me stick a battery on it and I'll... Ah, mind your fingers. Pretty much silent. In terms of its heat, I used this on a professional shoot last week and it was on around 50% for an hour and a half continuously. The top vent itself did get quite warm. So just be careful when maneuvering it around or if you're planning on popping it back into its bag straight away. If that's the only bit that gets hot, that's, it's pretty impressive. If anyone's planning on using these lights in an environment such as this, let's do that now. If I replace my 120D with a newer panel, and also, while we're at it, let's replace the background light, which is currently the MC, with my other LED panel. Technically, I think I prefer the MC for the backlight, just because I can have it right behind me, technically hidden behind that plant. Whereas with the newer panel, because it's larger and I haven't got anywhere to mount it yet and it can't fit behind me, I've got it up and just hitting the wall. And to me, it doesn't have the same effect. I'll probably go back to the MC for using that backlight. In fact, I'm just gonna do it now because I really don't like it. That's better. To let you guys know, the newer panel that I'm using now as my key light is at 100% in its intensity. So I don't think it's even matching the intensity of the 120D at 75%. But like I said, my intention for this light was to act as more of a fill or a backlight as opposed to my key. So if for my position that I'm in, 
I'm more than happy with this light and its performance. But for some people, this can still work perfectly fine if these are the only lights that you might have. So let me give you my own personal summary of these lights. This is just my attempt of giving a general overview of these lights and I understand that everyone's needs are different. These lights are bright enough for the majority of lighting setups that you might encounter, such as an interview setup or even maybe some product work. I wouldn't necessarily use this for advanced product work because the intensity isn't there for if you ever needed to increase the shutter speed, such as when you're shooting in slow motion. However, for more generic product work and video work, these lights will do you absolutely fine. Whether you choose to invest in these lights or not is entirely down to where you are right now in your development as a filmmaker. For anyone who's just starting out and want to invest in your first set of lights, these are without doubt the best bang for your buck at the minute. Guaranteed, I'm gonna get a lot of usage out of these, which is exactly what you want to feel when investing in a new piece of kit. For anyone who's in a similar position to me, who is just looking to expand their lighting setup and use these as potentially fill lights or backlights, these will still do absolutely fine. Plus the additional features that you get, such as the RGB and the effect modes that you get with them, is just extra opportunity that you can have and play with in your projects. I can pretty much guarantee that you won't see these lights in rental houses and higher end filming makers also won't be investing in these lights, even with the features that they have. If I were to be critical, it would have been nice to see the following. A little wallet for the diffusion panels. The sturdiness of the bags themselves don't really fill me with hope, therefore I'm probably always going to have to pop the diffusion back in front of the LED just so I know it's in a more secure place during transit. This would have been a relatively inexpensive addition to the set, but guarantee it would have been appreciated by a lot of folk. Like I said earlier as well, having a few more of the traditional lighting effects such as fire or candle or even the faulty bulb, that would be really nice to have as well. I think that is pretty much it. I think in terms of my budget and what I wanted to spend, I'm getting the best value for money with these lights. And just to remind you guys again, I got two of these for 270 quid. As well as being available in a set of two, you can also buy this as a standalone light or as a set of three. So it's completely dependent on your requirements at the time to determine how many of these lights you might invest in. As ever guys, I really hope you've enjoyed watching the video and maybe even helped you make a decision or even found a new light that you weren't considering before. If you have any other suggestions, do let me know in the comments below, guys, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as ever, until next time, take care, and I'll see you very soon.